Hello, everyone. We're back with another Tough Love Thursday. And for those of you who've been following along with these quick short segments every Thursday, you will have maybe noticed that I haven't done one in a few weeks. And I thank you for your patience and understanding. It has been a wild few weeks as I've just opened a registration for my grand finale final round of the Emotional Empowerment Program. And the live masterclass that I hosted just a few weeks ago took all of my time and capacity. So I did take a break from these Tough Love Thursdays, but I'm back. And I've got another good one in store for all of you today, as well as actually some really important updates that I'm going to share with you at the end of today's episode. So stay tuned for that. You're going to want to know what's happening with the podcast, what's happening with these Tough Love Thursdays going forward. So let's get into today's Tough Love. And as you know, I love sitting with these in the morning and thinking to myself, you know, really feeling into what's the message that I want to share today? What's the tough love that needs to come through me today that all of you need to hear? And it's interesting because this came to me today in the middle of my morning routine. And the tough love that I want to share with all of you today is this real truth that most of you are starting your days wrong. And by that, I mean, most of you are starting your day in a way that really actually sets you up for failure or sets you up at least for a really challenging day and maybe even a blood sugar roller coaster and cravings throughout the day. We don't quite understand the importance of how we first start our day. I always say, and my mentors always um, also say, you know, the first and last hour of every day are often the most important, especially for your mental health and of course your sleep and your physical health. I mean, there's so many conversations that we could be having here. But in terms of actually talking about sugar, right, and actually talking about our cravings, what we actually start our day with sets us up, sets the energy, sets the mood, sets the tone for our whole day. And this is in regards to our physical uh, blood sugar regulation, as well as our hormone levels throughout the day and our mental health and our energy. So there's a lot of areas of our being, spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, that are affected literally by those first things that we choose to do in the morning. Now, I know if you're like most of the women that I work with and also the old version of myself, you may be starting your day rolling over in bed, the alarm goes off, you immediately pick up your phone, maybe you're scrolling Instagram, you're scrolling your email, you're immediately outward focused, <laughs> disconnecting, and probably even getting triggered by, oh, I have so many emails to, to overwhelm you. So really sending your energy in a toxic uh, direction first thing in the morning. So the phone piece is massive. Stay off your phone. If you want to actually have a calm and grounded and nervous system regulated day, do not start your day with your phone. I've experimented with this with myself and massive difference I noticed just in, in the way that I feel every day, you know, in the days when I do choose to start with a oh, quick scroll through Instagram changes everything. So stay off your phone, <laughs> at least for the first half an hour if you can. So, but this is where most of you are doing, right? We're getting immediately engaged in something external. So it may not be your phone, but it may be getting out of bed and immediately tending to your husband, immediately tending to your kids or your partner, uh, just getting right up, maybe getting right to work and, and really just actively starting your day without taking any space or time to pause and be intentional about how you're starting your day. So this is massive. Right. Having a and I'm not even talking about a specific morning routine that I recommend you do. I think we all have different things that serve us in the morning. But I do confidently believe that to help set your blood sugar up for the day, to help set your cortisol and your, uh, you know, your emotional state throughout the day, you must take at least 15 minutes. I'm going to I'm going to even pare it down 15 minutes. I recommend an hour. Um, and this is usually what I'm able to give myself. Not every day the more time, the better to really allow yourself to start your day inward. So not externally thinking about where you just immediately getting up and giving your energy away before you've even filled your own cup in the morning. Now, we can also think subconsciously that we are the most sort of open and sensitive in the morning, right? We've just come out of this dream state, hopefully a restful long sleep. And we're really extra malleable and susceptible to input. So if you're immediately getting up and watching the news, your whole day is probably going to be pretty uh, anxious, depressed, scared, you know, depending on what's on the news, but we, we know that's usually pretty negative stuff there. 
So really being cautious about what am I inputting into my brain in that first hour. So even if you do have to get up and, and do some things, right, and tend to the kids, <clears throat> just making sure that you're doing that presently, right? And you're doing that in a way that fills your cup. And there's lots of ways that you can do that. So I really just want to remind all of you, you know, this, this piece is so important around starting your day fueling your battery. And I'm a big fan of obviously hydrating. Okay, so we're going to talk physical here for a second. Starting your day with hydration, your body has just gone, you know, at least seven, eight, nine hours without any hydration, and you need hydration. So I'm um, a big fan of some warm lemon water, maybe with a squeeze of salt in it. I often put like an element um, electrolyte pack sometimes in my morning water, and I drink a liter. Um, so do what you can, drink at least two cups of water first thing in the morning a liter if you can. That's something that I just feel so good in my body. I get that liter of water down, you know, within the first like sort of 15 minutes of the day. And I know that I'm fueling my body with that really good hydration first thing uh, before putting anything else in my body. Also, of course, uh, something I'm admittedly not great at, <laughs> brushing your teeth in the morning, right? Dental hygiene affects what's going on in our, in our gut microbiome, affecting our cravings, all sorts of things. So starting your day this way, breaking your fast intentionally as well. So are you jumping right into having some carbs first thing in the morning, right? If we're talking about setting yourself up for blood sugar success, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that first meal of your day, whenever it is that you have it, is protein and fat focused and healthy protein and fat focused, by the way, and setting your blood sugar up for, for success throughout the day, right? Setting that sort of grounding foundation for yourself. Another really important piece to build into your morning is light, getting outside without sunscreen and sunglasses, like not blocking the natural UVA and UVB rays that our body actually needs through our eyes, sending signals to, uh, to, to switch off and on our cortisol levels, our serotonin levels, uh, you know, all the hormones that really support us in waking up for the day and also support us actually towards the end of the day, down regulating and getting ready for sleep, right? We'll be naturally releasing melatonin. This is all literally circadian rhythm. This is all tied to the light. So get outside, even if it's just for five minutes, even in the winter. And now that you can see here, I'm outside. <laughs> I am now living outside because it's warm enough here. Get your feet in the earth, get grounded, you know, get barefoot if you can, spend five minutes out on the grass. You actually can see my morning routine right behind me. I've got my yoga mat. If you're watching this in the Facebook group, um, I come out here, I do some stretching, I'm down on the earth, I'm drinking my water, I'm out getting some sunlight first thing in the morning to support my cortisol levels and therefore support my insulin levels throughout the day. So these are just a few things that I wanted to shed light on. This is such a big topic, but I wanted to just plant that seed for all of you today that you're most likely caught up in some sort of unhealthy morning routine. And it is affecting not only your mood, your mental health, your emotional state, but also your physical being and your blood sugar throughout the day. So my ask of all of you is to, if you're watching on Facebook, drop in the comments below, what is the one shift and change that you're going to make to your morning routine? And start implementing that this week and just notice, pay attention to how that feels. Maybe it's keeping your phone turned off for an extra half an hour. Maybe it's starting your day with a liter of nice, warm, nourishing water. Maybe it's getting outside in the morning, moving your body. Obviously, we didn't talk about that. Very wonderful in the mornings as well. So there's so much that we can do, right? Starting with gratitude. I mean, we're not talking about morning routines in depth here, right? There's so much. But a few things there that I just want to highlight because most women, I see this completely giving themselves away immediately upon waking and it totally shifts your whole day totally shifts your whole day and i guarantee if you start playing with really setting yourself up with a nice slow morning routine even if it's 15 minutes of slow presence maybe a meditation a slow walk outside the rest of your day will be completely different so that's my promise to you now get out there and practice it and love that you tuned into another episode. As I promised at the beginning, I do have some news, some updates for all of you. Uh, nothing crazy, but exciting updates actually about the podcast and about these Tough Love Thursdays. I know many of you listen to this on the podcast. And as I've been sharing over the last few episodes, you know from my pregnancy announcement that I'm expecting my first in October. And as part of that, I'm going to be transitioning into taking a year off 
Now, the podcast will continue. I'm going to be pre-recording a lot of episodes and making sure that you've got good content coming to you. Um, most likely will be transitioning into an episode every two weeks on the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Those transitions will happen most likely in September, August. And these Tough Love Thursdays will also be coming to an end uh, temporarily. So we will be shifting back into one episode um, every two weeks. And again, this transition is going to, I'm giving you lots of heads up. This transition is happening most likely in August and September. Stay tuned. I'll keep you posted. Um, but I will be pairing back in order to really gift myself and my child the presence and attention that they deserve and that I deserve as I make a massive identity shift, a massive life change, and taking that space for myself to be able to go slow to really just be present with that whole process. And I'm oh, just so deeply honored that I get to do that. And I've set my life up in a way that I can. I, I know that's not for everybody. Um, but for me, I'm so excited about it. And that does mean there's going to be some changes on the podcast. So I wanted to keep you in the loop, keep you updated. And uh, the Tough Love Thursdays here, I know that you love these episodes. They will also be uh, petering out over the next couple of weeks uh, as we head closer into summer. So so them in now. There's going to be a couple more coming at you. I'll let you know when the final one is. And yeah, just so grateful for all of you following along with these, whether you're in my private Facebook group or you're listening on the podcast. It just means the world to me. And I hope that you really enjoyed today's. Let me know again in the comment below what one shift to your morning routine are you going to be making starting this week. All right, everyone, that's all for today. We'll see you next week. Uh, same time, same place.